parks somewhere there. This is starting to look like a, an average month. It's always nice to report that revenues exceed expenses, in this case by over $100,000. very nice. And we're drawing close down to the end of the year, and I think we're going to finish up pretty well. Uh, when I say it's uh, average, I'm saying with the exclusion of any one-time uh, funds, but we received some significant one-time funds. And then uh, moving on to the House receivable aging. This is really starting to look pretty good. Um, it's taken a while, but this is getting really down thanks to uh, Karina and Stu and Carrie and Yeoman work on getting this uh, where we really feel like this is where we're at and that uh, these numbers um, for the most part are achievable. We know that, for example, airspace education. We're not going to get that, so we are asking that to be allowed to HPCers for a collection. And uh, we will for a bit for Sephora, uh, we're still in the process, but um, now we're down to $58,584, uh, that's, that's significant. We've noted the payment arrangements for those that we've made special deals with, and the progress on those is down in the left-hand corner. That's all Items D, E, and F were presented at the last board meeting for board's review and comment from the public. We have received no comments from the public and uh, none from the board on the budget as presented. We had a, uh, a question on the Cal City uh, Fund that we transferred to the city of Cal City for uh, use in their Cal City Airport since the airport is within the district and it meets the terms and conditions of our agreement dating back into the 90s. Does the board have any questions before I ask your approval on these three items? Let's okay. Take, let's take them one at a time. Okay. Yeah. Item D. The let, let me get hold on one second there. Um, can I get a motion for approval of the American cost of living increases, please? What was the CPI for the personnel of the district? And as such, we evaluate each person every year uh, with a performance appraisal. And it's very subjective. I am charged with determining a person's value to the district. And since I have been here, I have done that on a pay-for-performance basis, not a what you're likely to do for me next year. So I use that as my basis for awarding merits. The, the way I approached it this year is I took the total salaries of the district and multiplied it by 3%, and that became the pool I was using to allocate for merits. Included in that, I didn't allocate all the funds that are available at 3%. I didn't include myself in that at all for my contract, but I was in the pool. And that left approximately 1% for all the remaining staff to have a raise, which brought them up to near the cost of living for the sector that we're in. Where that, I, I forget what they call we're in the. <coughs> Orange County to something, LA Basin uh, Consumer Price Index region. I'm not sure what it's called. So it's highly subjective on my part. But I looked at uh, what the district had been through this last year when we uh, dealt with uh, the loss of our former CFO, the value that people were making individually to. Uh, get the finance department back in order to sustain an audit that we're currently going through. The amount of funds that we raised outside of normal day-to-day -day business transactions in fuel and leases uh, to, um, to get us where we are today. Uh, I think everyone has been recognized 
uh, in this pool. The reason these particular uh, <coughs> job positions are called out, and I know you're not going to like this, but it is what it is. We are mandated by CalPERS to itemize those individually and present it and have the board approve it. Uh, but the, the way that, that it's governed is you as a board member can approve the budget with my recommendations as a whole. Uh, you can't cherry pick per se. You could say, uh, I don't like it, I vote against it. And then it's back to us to come back with a new budget and the new recommendations. But if any raises are given based on merit, I have to call them out by job title and present them and the methodology I use for any cost of living. That's how we're governed. Was that enough detail? Okay, thank you. <laughs> any other questions from the board members? Sure. And the way this lease is, is written, as with many of our leases, if a tenant chooses to sell or divest themselves of a property on our dirt, they have a couple of choices. They can dismantle it and remove it. They can offer it to us to purchase, or they can offer it to anyone else in the public that would choose to buy it. We have precedent on, on this subject because of the way he structured his letter. Uh, Dan has requested that uh, the f six years remaining on his current contract, in addition to one five-year option, be extended to whoever raises their hand and wants to buy it at whatever asking price he puts it on the market. That is certainly acceptable to me and it's consistent with what we've done in the past. And it says then, or the same terms afforded me something to that effect. And what I interpret that to be is can this new buyer come in and renegotiate a lease on that property for a longer term? and bring it up to market rate. That is, again, certainly acceptable and consistent with how we've handed previous transfers. We may, we will certainly be given the opportunity to buy it at whatever price the sale price is. And if we choose not to, then we can either extend the contract to the new buyer for the 11 years remaining at the current rate. You could also raise it to market rate but typically we have done that only when the new buyer comes in and says, I want to add another X number of years, three more options, or something. But it's an opportunity to call the current lease to market rate. We may decide we want to let the new buyer keep it for 11 years at the current rate, and then the property reverts to us, and then we can charge whatever we get for a hanger. That's an option available to us. I think Mr. DeLong's request is certainly consistent with how we've done business in the past, and I recommend your approval that we come back and say all of the options you outlined are acceptable, but we are not going to outline the terms of that until we see what the new buyer proposes. Motion to approve. Second. Any questions from the board? Jimmy, I'd like to ponder your question. I always thought when we when a sale went through, it was always to get them to come up to the new whatever our agreements are, not to to pass on whatever was was left. But I understand this point. This is first. Let's get a motion for approval before we start a lengthy discussion. Move to approve. A second. Second. Okay. Uh, so you walk again, I haven't had any uh, questions. So we presented the budget. Uh, you approved two enclosures thereof and now it's down to the formal resolution that's required again by the state and Scott and or Mike can be happy to explain this. I know we do it every year but don't ask me to explain this piece of paper. It's some magical formula that with the state gives us and we punch in numbers and it puts out a number and but at the end of the day, we have to approve our budget, and this is how you attest to it and send it back to the state, Mr. Nodder. Okay. Why don't we look at any questions anybody has? Do you have anything you want to say before we ask questions? Hey, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. All right. Let's... Board members, questions on the budget? No. Or the resolution? Are we doing the resolution or the budget? Or are we doing it's both it's a resolution, and yeah, it's one, one resolution that covers the budget and the contingent reserve, the investment policy, and the approval.
at some point, it, at some point, I'm going to have difficulty approving budgets when we have completed audits. And um, while I believe that I can rely on the staff's budget process mm -hmm. and the numbers, there's no reason I, I can't rely on them. Um, there's also the reasons why we have numbers audited uh, so that know that we know going forward that there's some sort of assurance <coughs> that we're operating from a basis that is not only consistent from year to year, but also has materially accurate numbers. And, and it's from that foundation that the budgets are ever built. So th this is a this is one's going to be a challenge for me because I want to approve the budget. Um, but th th there's a big question in the air about the status of the audits on it. Uh, that's, that's my comment. Okay, that's a valid comment. All right, well, we know that the uh, audit is not going to be completed today. Mm -hmm. We'll have an update on, our, on the audit, but I think we're mostly in the audit process as opposed to uh, the facts at this point, but we'll get that shortly. Uh, in the meantime, we do have to either approve or not approve uh, budget resolution. So do we have any other questions? What? I may be wrong, but I don't, I may be wrong, Mr. Nave, Mr. Chairman, but we don't have to approve or, or not approve. At this juncture in time, yeah. I'm not saying I'm not saying we, we should or shouldn't. We have a motion on the table that uh, we need to either vote for or against. And we need to do a roll call vote for this. Item. You do? Yep. Well, I think there's a valid question. Are we under a statutory deadline of any kind? July one, you're supposed to have your annual budget, and you send it to the county. I'm not sure exactly what the deadline is for sending it in, but it's by September 1. So we have like a, you're supposed to have, by July 1, you're supposed to have your annual budget. Do we know when the uh, audit will be completed? Will we will see a completed audit? We were given a forecast previously of August, September time frame. That's changed. No reason to believe it is. It will be by July 1. So our meeting last week, I believe uh, that we uh, part of the uh, <coughs> moving forward with the budget was that we were going to get an audit update, which we have scheduled for today. Well, we can amend it if it's not going to fit. Can so. always amend the, amend the budget down the road. That's absolutely true. Well, we're uh, consulting, uh, com thinking up here. Uh, any public comment or public questions on uh, this resolution? I don't see any out there. Any other questions from the board members? All right, Debbie, I need a roll call vote, please, for uh, approval of the uh, financial resolution for uh, FY 2015-2016 budget and investment procedures. Director Valentine? Yes. Director Painter? Yes. Director Deaver? Yes. Director Evans? Yes. Director Peterson? Yes. All right. Yeah, it's a, it's a, I'll call them a, a regional firm because they cover a lot of territory. They do probably 40 to 50 audits a year. And then with a staff of uh, about 50, Mark himself is the uh, audit manager, has a lot of experience doing audits uh, originally with Arthur Anderson, and then uh, with PwC after that when Arthur Anderson hit the ball. Um, so his thing is, is really audits, that's what he does, and he's been doing it for many, many years. So uh, I guess I'm trying to convey I have a lot of confidence in him. Uh, I wish I could make the timing better, uh, but I guess we get to hear about that. Mark, well, welcome to the meeting, and please. Thank you. So, uh, we'll an update. Appreciate the opportunity to speak. Um, we received the trial balances about mid-April and uh, corresponding work papers. Um, the timing of it was we were going to be able to start in mid-May just because of the busy season that all of us tax people and audit people go through. So we started in mid-May and provided a number of selections for testing and questions that we provided at the end of May. June 1st, I think. And our plan is to come out next week and go through all the selections and do all the testing at that point. We're hoping to knock out all four years at once to be as efficient as possible. Um, at that point, I think the timing's still about right. I hope to have it finished by the end of August. That's my goal. September is more of a 
fall back if we enter into any problems, but my goal is to have it done by the end of August. You say all four years, that's ending year 2014. 14, so that's June 2014? Correct. So 2011 through 2014, the audits that are open at this point. And when do we anticipate starting the 2015? Uh, if we're approved, uh, we would have to ending in a couple weeks here. Correct. If we're approved for that, um, we haven't discussed the timing of that, but I would assume September or October we would start that audit with uh, staff being ready for that. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, board questions that you have for this term? Here again with their little model railroad. It's a modular <laughs> thing that they set up. And it's, uh, I believe it's O gauge, the Lionel train that I used to play with. I love my brother's trains. But um, uh, it's fun for kids of all ages. And they set up out on the patio in front of the ledger. And uh, I saw Doug Castleman over the weekend, and he said he would be here. He said, I won't have any train pictures, but I'll have airplane pictures. <coughs> so um, we've got summer hours. It begins at 9. <laughs> I have a feeling it's going to be in the triple digits again. But uh, 9 to 1, and uh, the airplane <coughs> will be on display again. People are encouraged to bring their historic airplanes out and, and uh, have them on display. I think it'll be a fun time, and uh, saw uh, Jimmy Doolittle the third and his wife, and she says we have Jimmy Doolittle the fourth, and we're going to bring him. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was really going to be neat. So you know, you can just come and visit, and uh, and play with trains. We're going to give away a little model uh, train layout. It it's not real big, but it does have the sound with it, the all aboard. And, to buy a ticket because your little one will love it. <laughs> and um, shoot, my husband loves it, so uh, I may not be able to get it away from you. But I hope you all can come out. And I just wanted to let you know some of the things that we have planned for the future. In July, Lori Crown will be coming from uh, Honor Flight, Kern County, and that's where they send <coughs> veterans from World War II, Korea, Vietnam to Washington, D.C. to see the monuments, and it's free for the veteran. And uh, she'll be telling all about that. That's a, it's a great program. And then in August, Todd Schultz is going to bring his restored 50 vintage glider out here and tell how he restored it. So I can hardly wait to hear his brother tell about restoring his dad's uh, 1931 Stinson Jr. Uh, he bought it from a, a museum that had it, and they're going through it. And I think Barbara's more excited than Phil is. <laughs> so it was a beautiful airplane. I remember when Phil restored it back in the 70s. And, uh, but it, it's a beautiful big airplane. Is that a four-seat or a two-seat? Oh, it's four. Oh, it's, it's made, you know, anything made in the 30s was just so classy. Like and I mean, me. Yeah. <laughs> just the 30s. Like Bill. Not off three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the cars and the airplanes were just fabulous in the 30s. So it, it's really, really neat. So we've got some good programs coming up. So anyway, come to Plane Crazy Saturday, third Saturday every month. Alpha explosives uh, at a rollover on the perimeter road, uh, and we had an ordeal that went on till about 8:30 in the evening, and uh, it involved a number of county agencies, uh, and uh, again, no injuries, and no loss of property except to Alpha. I told you I'd report on the DC trip uh, three weeks ago. I, I went to DC on behalf of another one of our tenants, ASB, on a project that they're working. They um, have been doing uh, terrific work of late, upgrading civil aircraft with glass cockpits. They've had two Pratt & Whitney engine test vehicles, uh, 747 SPs in this year. And I know uh, Dwayne and Brian have been before you at times when 
they were having trouble uh, struggling with uh, rent payments and the like, and they've always been very forthright with it, and they come and sit in here and they tell you straight up. Dwayne and Brian brought in these two 747s, and I asked Harold for the numbers this morning. And it was just a couple hundred gallons short of 82,000 gallons of fuel uh, as they completed the glass cockpit upgrades and, and, and performed the uh, acceptance testing of these two vehicles. That's just this year, and one of them just left. I think it was Friday of last week. May have been right over my house. Um, <laughs> so I, it's it's worth saying. I really appreciate uh, the tenants and uh, working with Brian and, and Dwayne from time to time. Uh, we also were trying to influence the selection of the next subcommittee on space chairman, and a number of us from the high desert were advocating for the freshman from Palmdale, Steve Knight. And Steve, I know, was on the short list of the subcommittee panelist on the subcommittee on space. He also serves on the House Armed Services Committee and the Aerospace Subcommittee. And the precedent had been set uh, two or three, four years ago when uh, Mr. Palazzo was a freshman and he was appointed to be the chairman of the subcommittee on space under the chairman Lamar Smith. So we thought maybe we could get the precedent to extend to the new freshman from Palmdale. Unfortunately, Steve was not selected to be the chair. It went to uh, Brian Baben of, of Houston. But uh, the consolation prize, Steve was given vice chair of the Energy Committee. And again, I don't think you have to be real bright to look around the neighborhood and see where energy is big business both uh, wind, solar, and uh, traditional fossil energy. So Steve did get a vice chairman spot, and I look forward to working with, with Mr. Babin, and I certainly appreciate Mr. Smith, Lamar Smith, the chairman of the full committee of the House Science, Space, and Technology Committee, uh, for inviting me to town and to personally want our input and hear us out. Um, I think it's a a priceless opportunity to to uh, take the flag east and uh, anyway I win some I don't win some but I think we want a pretty nice consolation prize um, we also I've been in two meetings with Mr. Coy I know he's in the room today with a, several of his board members and council from the public utility district and uh, Mr. Coy has brought to my attention several things that were reflective in the budget you approved today and Mr. Coy has made some recommendations to me, and I think we agree in principle on several of them that we need to take a look at uh, how the district's water use and sewage discharge is monitored uh, in both flow and content, and uh, how we know, and then how we move forward and start predicting on a monthly basis or an annual basis fees. And, Mr. Coy has provided us uh, with the original contract. It turns out it's the first time I'd ever seen it. And I read it in total. I've also read the engineering reports that uh, the, the utility district is using to guide them in, in how they set fees and rates. And I'm in receipt of a, a draft uh, uh, pro what proclamation, uh, help me out, B. Contract. contract amendment, contract amendment that uh, again is reflective of the two discussions we had. Uh, the one provision in it, and if I had brought it to you for approval today that I don't understand, and I've asked council and our engineering staff to take a look at the data that we've requested from the district where we can do our own independent look at what the use is, what the flow rates are, uh, and how we go forward perhaps assessing tenants or certain tenants on a tiered level uh, for water use because currently we're not charging any one of our tenants for use of water and if the if the fees were to escalate from roughly a hundred thousand a year to three hundred thousand a year uh, this board has heard from me in the past it's a subject we're gonna have to address one day and it, this may be the day and uh, the good news is we're in discussion 
And I really enjoy working with B personally. Uh, the the one thing in the contract that I I just want to make sure that when I ask you to sign a contract amendment that it will survive the 25 years that the uh, the last one has survived, <laughs> if you will. And it's done a pretty good job up to this point. So the one provision of, of giving away our constitutional right to hearings, I, I, I'm just, I want to get that right in my own mind before I bring a recommendation, but I also want to see the data that they're providing us. And uh, we should be back the second meeting of July with a report from civil engineering and recommendations on how to proceed with a contract amendment. Uh, we've got 18 kids coming. Uh, the schools participating are uh, Mojave, California City, Rosamond, Tatchpee, Tatchpee Willow Oaks, and the Palmdale Academy. Uh, we also have one student uh, who is a child of an NTPS employee and one student who is a child of an NTPS contractor. Um, so we'll be kicking off on Monday. It's five and a half days. We'll culminate on Saturday uh, at lunchtime. We'll finish up. <coughs> um, we've got uh, some more sponsors this year. Every year we gain one or two more. So um, official monetary sponsors. We have the Union Bank is sponsoring and the Society of Experimental Test Pilots. Uh, there, we also have uh, some funds that were uh, uh, donated uh, in memory of Mr. Mike Hill um, for the flight test camp support. Uh, and then we're also getting very, very uh, non-monetary but very important support from the Mojave Air and Space Port, and then also from uh, various uh, organizations here on the uh, uh, airport who will be supporting the tours, which I'll back brief you who those were once they've occurred because there's still a little, little flux there about what's exactly going to occur when. But anyway, it should be exciting. We're kicking off Monday, and uh, kids are all ready to go. Mr. Chairman, did you say the number of your students you have enrolled? 18. I, I just think what you're doing is just fantastic. I mean, we've been involved at a personal level. I know when Mike was running it, now Russ is running it. He's called, uh, I've been in those rooms with those kids, and uh, you know, I, I, I suspect you're flying some kids that have never been in an airplane. Yeah, we usually have one or two that's our first time ever in an aircraft. Yeah. And to be around this level of talent in Mojave to see an inside look, I, I tip my hat to you. Way to go. Really neat. Any other reports from the board? All right. Any uh